I don't know how much of that you can read, but I can certainly read Anti-Personnel Mine, ages 14 and up, and a logo that looks suspiciously similar to the Team Satomi logo from IGPX, one of my favorite shows ever. And uh, maybe that's not a good thing to put on your box if you're shipping something overseas, but uh, it arrived all right. I was sent this from TacticalXmen.com to do a video on, and I certainly appreciate them sending me this. If you want to check them out, there is a link down below where you can check this out for yourself. And uh, you may be noticing this is suspiciously similar to a thing we've looked at before, but it is different, I assure you, because this one does something the other one didn't. And the other one does things this one doesn't. We will talk about that. But yes, anti-personnel mine. And here's what you get in the box. The box is identical to the old one, by the way. But we'll go over the fact that you get some string and a thing to put the string thing on. This is so you can wire it up as like a trip mine. And then you get a charger, which uh, has an LED in it. So you just plug this into USB, charge your battery, which is included. There is a wireless detonator, which will take two AA batteries. Uh, looks suspiciously like an actual, it even says firing device for electrical M57. Again, uh, really role play. You get things, we will talk about those. That's part of what's different with this one. And you get the Claymore Mine. Uh, my apologies, there's actually a little key that will go on the top right here to prevent this from accidentally detonating. I can't find out where I placed mine. I'm sorry about that. But otherwise, on the actual Claymore itself, you got a little opening front hole thing so you can pour BBs down into it after it's been primed. Uh, we're not going to be using it for that, but you could use it for that. Again, this is kind of an anything Claymore. Anything you could fit inside of this thing, it will fling out like a projectile because it's spring-loaded. Uh, originally, it's meant more for like gel balls, Orbeez, exploder rounds, or airsoft BBs, uh, but it will work with a variety of things that you could fit inside of this, which we will go over. And then on the back, you've got some sling points right here. You've got some legs. These are really important. You have to tighten these with a screwdriver, and it's kind of annoying because after this thing detonates a couple of times, these usually come loose, and uh, you might want to carry a screwdriver on you just in case that happens. The battery port is located on the back here, which we will go ahead and undo the screw. I don't think the screw is necessary, but it would be pretty important. Open that. Connect our battery. The battery life on this thing is quite insane, I might add. I have still not charged my original one since I got it, because I lost the charger, and yet it still works. I've taken it to like three different games and used it for several hours, and it's still fired up even like several months later, so good on that one. I'm guessing it doesn't use a whole lot of power, and there you go. You have a battery in there. Now this is where things start to get a little bit different, because we're going to take a look at the original one here. This is the one that I painted orange, so it doesn't look like an actual bomb, which is important when I'm using this in like a public park. This one not so much, although it does, this one was originally just like an OD green. This one actually has some like tiger striping on it. Uh, I mean, again, I would rather this just be a bright pink color so people don't think it's an actual claymore, but whatever, and the same thing. you would. Charge, you put the battery in here, you put whatever you want in there, and close it up, then you just take a detonator and go like that, and it would let go of that latch with a motor, and it would go boom, and it would be pretty cool. This one, not so much. So, there's some uh, due diligence I had to do with this product here, because uh, this is essentially somebody modded one of these to do a different thing. That's it. Like, this, I'm gonna let you know right ahead, does not do anything with this. I'm not sure why. In fact, when you buy yours, it might not even contain this. I mean, I really hope it does, because you can, in fact, convert this back to being this one. But the feature this one has and this one doesn't is that this is an infrared laser trip mine. So you can actually use it like a Claymore from, like, Call of Duty or Metal Gear or something like that. You literally put it down and you arm it. There's new controls on it. And it will be inactive for a few seconds, and then it will be armed. And if anything walks in front of it, it will automatically eject. Which is, I would say, a lot more useful. A lot more. We'll get on that in a little bit, because there are some flaws. But that's a lot more useful. But this will not work. Now, I'll have to get some close-ups, but if you were to look, this is like, they drilled a hole, put a switch in, hot glued it. This, they literally just drilled a giant hole and hot glued a new switch in there. That is the new on-off switch. You can see a powered on, blah, blah. They actually included, like, some kind of miniature computer in here compared to this one. The weirdest part, and I will have to show this, is that the internals for making this 
like the remote are still in this one. Completely. The same internals from this are still present, but they're not hooked up to anything. So if you want, and I have right here, what you would have to do to convert it to be a wireless detonator, once again, you can do that. But it doesn't do that out of the box. I don't know why they wouldn't let it work with both. I'm sure there's a reason. And I'm sure many of you that are inclined with electronics are already looking at this and going, oh God, you just do this, this, and it would work. I, I don't really know, and hopefully somebody down there can let me know in the comment section how to get that done, because that would be cool. But otherwise, hey, a free 2.4 gigahertz wireless thing that you could use to power pretty much anything. So, cool? But yeah, that really struck me as weird. So there's literally the switch, the on-off switch that's inside this one, is present here and it doesn't do anything. I don't get it either. So... We'll have to do a demonstration. I will put this this way so it's easy to see, but I will have some actual fire demonstration. But when I press this button, it's going to shut off that light and it will become armed after a few seconds. Now, what's supposed to happen is that anything that goes in front of this claymore will set it to explode. I will go like this and it will fire. That's really freaking cool and really, really useful. And honestly, that I'm like, this is really cool. You can use the remote detonator. That kind of limited what applications this one could be used for. This is autonomous. This actually works really well. Is what I would say if it didn't have an Achilles heel. And I will demonstrate that Achilles heel for you. I think it's something that is fixable. Now, the biggest issue is the field of view. Yeah, so it... I don't know exactly how wide it is, but it's literally like 160 degrees in front of it. It is massive. You could be completely outside the scope of this thing's, and it would still detonate. Which means if you're putting it behind a tree or something and waiting for somebody to run past a tree, it will most likely go off and do absolutely nothing. It is possible to put enough projectiles in here that it would actually spray out and hit everything. Again, if you're using it for its original intended role with airsoft BBs or gel balls, totally a thing. There's only so many rival rounds and half darts you can fit in this thing, though, and that's where things get a little trickier. The field of view for our application, I would say, is too large. I think that may be fixable if you were to put, like, some kind of tube like that over it. I haven't experimented all that much with it yet, but that may be fixable. However, if you use this tactically, you put it in a choke point or in a corner or something like that, you have a better chance of this thing actually working the way you would intend it to. Which is, uh, well, really good. I will say that the responsiveness and the range of this thing is pretty much what you would want. The range is pretty extreme at some times, and it most likely won't hit anything, so keep that in mind as well. This thing can't tell the difference between fender foe. In fact, it can't tell a friendly dog from a squirrel. So, also keep that in mind. In fact, I think a tree moving could possibly set this off. So, yeah, be a little gentle. I would actually... Can I talk? I just came up with an idea I should have tested when the sun was still up. Now I need to test it. One moment. Thankfully, it does have some kind of minimum before it will detonate. A dart doesn't seem to be able to do it, so... That's great. That means like a dart going through the air hopefully shouldn't set this thing off, but if you place it in a field, somebody far away could trip this thing. Who knows, really? The little key that goes in here to prevent it from detonating broke on mine, and I lost the one to this one, so keep that in mind. If you touch this little lever right here, it will in fact detonate. So yeah, that's a thing. And if you're shoving rival rounds in here, like more than nine, I would say you're gonna put a lot of stress on this mechanism. It's been fine for me, but that's what probably broke my key in the first place. So yeah, but you probably don't need a whole lot of rival rounds in this one because if somebody's in front of it, they're probably going to get hit by it. It doesn't need to hit any kind of insane velocities or anything like that. It needs to fire a handful of rounds in front of it. That's it. You're gonna need to have some good players that will go by the honor system for this one because uh if nobody's around to catch it going off and hitting them then uh they might not go out people have trouble calling their hits in general sometimes but i would say this would be fair game and it's really good now i should mention 
Now you can currently purchase this on Amazon, uh, not like Amazon Prime or anything like that, but you can purchase this one for about 46 bucks. This is $76 as of the time of this recording on tacticalxmen.com, and it is basically the same thing, but this one has been modded to have a, like I said, a little computer and stuff in here and whatnot, so there's more stuff added to it. It's really crude, but you're probably not going to get a whole lot of other things that work like this one. So if this is something you desperately have to have, it's a worthwhile investment in my opinion. As long as you've gone, if I, as, I, as long as you understand what I've been talking about when it comes to its limitations, it's not perfect. It will probably need some tinkering to get even better and function perfectly. But again, I get really like, oh, you should just buy this Claymore instead. The only other Claymore is the same Claymore without with less features or different features. So, yeah. If this is the Mark 1.5, then I assume we'll probably see a Mark 2 at some point that may do everything perfectly, but this one don't. But that laser trip sensor is much better in my opinion, is way more fun and way more useful for the kind of play that I would use a Claymore for. So if that's something you think you need, I can recommend picking this one up, but... I wouldn't be surprised if another one comes out later that does even more things, so keep that in mind. I wish these were cheap enough that I could have more of them because, oh my gosh, it is a lot of fun when this thing works the way you want it to work. And honestly, I, I mean, I have two of these now. If I can sync them both up to the same remote and use them just as detonators, then sure. Um, I did find out that I don't think you can pair more than one remote to one mine, but you can, in fact, use both remotes to detonate one Claymore. So that is a thing. Keep that in mind. Overall, I'm happy, though. I like this thing. I think it's pretty good. It has its limitations. I think some of those could be overcome. But let me know what you think about the new infrared motion sensing Claymore mine down in the comment section below. I am going to cut out a big, nice Nerf logo with my vinyl cutter and put it on the front of this thing and have another Nerf Claymore. So I have one that works as a remote bomb and one that works as a proximity bomb. And now I think I finally have enough to do my specialist loadout. So I'm going to have to shoot a Fuzzy Walrus War Room here really, really soon. I'm all my 7 Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta...